Chaz Gold, it's a pleasure to have you um, here today and thank you so much for making the time to speak to me and the Meta Art Club community. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you're speaking from Portland, Oregon, is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So Portland has this, um, you know, really incredible global reputation. So can you give us a little bit of a, a, a context about kind of your, your journey as an artist based out of Portland and, and a photographer before that or in parallel? Um, luckily for me, I do a lot of nightclub photography also. It's kind of a, a hustle as a, as a living for money. Um, mm -hmm. For me, having the art scene, the fashion scene kind of all tied up in the nightclub scene here in Portland has been sort of a blessing in disguise. You know, it's like every time I'm in Portland, anything that's going on with the art scene is kind of tied in with DJs, it's tied in with the clubs, it's tied into nightlife. So I'm already out and about with my camera shooting photos at any events already. So getting 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 to network amongst all that is it, a bonus kind of. It's not so yeah. spread out as other cities like Los Angeles, Seattle, um, San Francisco, all those cities, when you, the, the art scene and, the, and, the, and the, the, the club scenes are kind of, are very distinctly different. With Portland, it's all kind of like tied up into one, one little like tidy little bundle, <laughs> if you would be, you know, and it's, I don't really, I don't understand. It's the only, it's different, it's different in the city that I've ever been in. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. You know, but it's it's at the same time it's like it's very different than any other city. It's very everything's very 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 um very organic and homegrown kind of. Yeah, that that's the reputation Portland yeah. has. Yeah, yeah there's an nice. amazing talent here though. I'll say that there's a lot of talented artists here. You know, a lot, okay. of, a lot of it's very standard old school art scene. It's very like I'm I'm trying to break in the NFT thing into the scene here, and people are still like. What? Like, <laughs> what's an NFT again? Yeah. What's this crypto art thing that we hear about? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of onboarding and a lot of talking to people and like introducing them into like what NFTs are and like what the community's about and like where it's coming from, you know. And, and it's it's a it's a little bit of extra work, but it's cool though. That's really cool. And and does that mean that your journey as an as a digital artist um, has been kind of was that born about through COVID and the nightclub scene shutting down and and you know you finding other avenues to to connect with NFT artists um, who were not based in your immediate kind of community. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this project, the project, the Shapes of the Divine project, which was, was the art that I'm going to be submitting to this, to this project also, like the style of art, mm -hmm. started off as a coffee table. Actually, so it started off as a as creative lighting class project for at my local community college. And it started off as that. And then it became this kind of like reputable, reputable weird thing amongst my community of friends and Burning Man people that I knew. And word got around that I was creating this amazing, comfortable, warm space for people to get back to their bodies with art. And then I was creating this form of art that nobody had ever done before. And at first I started using like wallpaper, like free download wallpaper stuff of like computer wallpapers of sacred geometry. That was, that was the beginning of it. And then I started contacting artists. The first artists that I contacted were like, were like Man of Sage and Cameron Gray and, and Android Jones. And, told them, I said, I want to make this coffee table book out of this stuff. And they're like, yeah, go for it. Use our art. And I was like, cool. So I started contacting other artists. And then next thing I knew, like two and a half, three years later, I'm like, all right, I still haven't published this book, but I have a database of, of 175 different, different artists that I can use their art anytime that I want, which is just, just a massive treasure trove of, of beautiful imagery that I could use as projections with anybody wow. I want to shoot with. You know, and um, now I'm finally getting to the point now where I'm actually going to wrap up the book. Um, I'd like to make the release date 111 2022. Most likely it's going to be 222. <laughs> 222 as, as, in, as in February? February 22nd, 
2022. I love that. It's really kind of cool because like that's a really cool synchronistic number right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's really cool. that's, 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 Yeah. So I'm thinking about just making it that, and that way I have a little bit of extra, that extra month to like, and 10 days to relax past the original idea for the, for the, for the drop date for 111, you know, but yeah, yeah. this is a lot of work. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a single man team. I don't, I don't have a whole team behind me doing this art. Like I've created a hundred, uh, I'm trying to, I'm working on creating 111 pieces. That's that are unique that are for this, this project. But I'm up to like 43 now, and I have still still work on the layout for the book. And my next phase of it is to like this next week is to get an Indiegogo page started, which mm-hmm. is going to be a, a kind of cool way to like bring people that don't really know about NFTs, like kind of onboard them into the NFT community. Yeah, through the Indiegogo through 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 crowd through crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, that's super cool. You know, so making that an option. To, to to get a copy of the book mm-hmm. you know like you can either donate through the indiegogo page as the the tiers of prices that it's gonna that are gonna go through mm-hmm. or you can simply buy one of the nfts and like get a copy of the, the electronic copy of the book or if you get buy two at two nfts and you get like the soft cover copy of the book anybody buys the three or more then they get the hardback cover book that's going to be signed by me and a handful of the models on certain pages with like augmented wow. reality pages with the, with its own app, you know, and for, for the for the special version. So amazing. And and on that note, I just want to just let everyone who's going to listen into this know that that we commissioned a theme um, for each of the artists for the Meta Art Club. So each of the thirty five artists um, were given the theme a new beginning um, to create a series of works around. Hello, Frank. Hi, Frank. Uh, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So sorry that I'm a little bit late and I've just come out of a meeting and uh, love to join you and, and listening, uh, Jess. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe it's also nice, Olivia, I'll just give you a little bit of an uh, introduction how I met uh, Jess. Is that uh, actually it was not too long ago and um, um, that I was in a in a small room on Clubhouse, and um, you know these are actually the rooms I like the most, maybe with 20, 30, uh, you know, guests in, and you know everyone sharing the story, mm-hmm. um, and actually, um, you know, that's where I heard Chess telling, uh, you know, his story and uh, um, being a photographer, and also creating his own music and how he cooperates with artists. Um, to create, uh, I think, quite something special. And, um, you know, we started, uh, yeah, and I think especially also the way he creates as well as his story, and it really called to me. So I think, Jess, uh, I think during the talk, I bought one of your works. Uh, in the meantime, I bought the second one. And, uh, um, yeah, really special. And uh, I, we always, uh, you know, on, on the drop, on the, on the Meta Art Club, what we do, we feel that diversity in every way is important, and that goes from, uh, uh, you know, sex, female, ma- uh, male. It goes to uh, geography, location. It goes to art style, and I think I felt I just felt that chess is very unique in what he is doing, and uh, yeah. So I thought uh, love to have him on board, and also to give him the support to, uh, to give him a wider platform. So. Uh, so very glad you're on board, Jess, and the, you know, it's so far, you know, we are so em- enormously grateful for, for the fantastic artists we have on board and uh, all the people we, we talk to, uh, their reactions are great. There are some big auction houses even, you know, wanted to see our artists line up and want to talk to us. So um, it's all very excited and so glad uh, that you're on board. and. Uh, yeah, then Olivia, you know, you do such an amazing job in an interview. So if you don't mind, uh, first I'm with interest going to listen to this interview and uh, and hear further the story. So thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. And thanks for thanks. picking up a couple of my pieces here. I, I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. You know, 
Like it, it really does. Um, so we were talking about the theme is going to be yeah. new beginnings. Yeah, you know, I have a whole collection of of literally, I think the number is up to like a little bit over fifty thousand photos now in the collection of like three hundred fifty seven photo shoots that I've done in the last four years. So wow. I mean, like, I thought a lot about that this last weekend. This last weekend, well, I had a lot of downtime to sit around and do nothing, so I wasn't feeling very well. So mm-hmm. I thought about like, new beginnings, like which shoots, which which pieces, like do I want to use for this theme, and like so I, all the all three of the pieces that I that I chose that I started to work on are all pictures, photo shoots of people with people that I, that have never done a photo shoot, professional photo shoot before ever in their life, and that's one of the things that I really love about about this project is like I get people in front of my camera that are like not professional models at all. You know, they've never, or they've never done a photo. They, they have done any modeling. They've never done any, any kind of like, any kind of modeling. Like they've never had anything artistic like this ever. It's like this whole like mismatch of like, of a whole cultural stew of like people within the pieces that I, that I chose with, which I thought was really kind of cool. Like yeah. I really want to, that's, that's one of the, one of the things that I were, that I, that I always focus on, on these photo shoots also is like making sure that like, that every that it's it's every person, every size, color, race, age. Like I've shot photos from somebody from nineteen all the way to sixty seven. Somebody that's eighty five pounds to four hundred seventy five pounds. Like, and every thing in between, every pronoun, and every like anybody that identifies as female or feminine, basically. Right. It's right. A big part of the project is that like it's that they're, it's about the inclusivity of it. You know what I mean? It's about the like everybody gets gets to like i don't ever turn anybody down for a photo shoot for this project ever like i want i want it to be super diverse and super beautiful and like i want that once a book comes out i want to see it on bookshelves around the country around the Mm -hmm. world and i want every person that picks it up to be able to recognize something in themselves inside that book i want you know i want them to see like the beauty in themselves reverberating through the photo scripts and the, uh, the piece of art that i've created with other people Mm-hmm. Like that's for, like that's the most important that's that's the best thing out of it doesn't matter how much money i can make or like how many did co- copies get distributed around the world what matters is that it's a, like if one if one person picks it up and it changes the way their outlook on life and themselves in then i've done my job that's yeah what that's, so that's really pr- that's what these pieces are going to be about can i can i just say that um, when I view your work, I really feel that it taps into um, the goddess within, and and that that's echoing what you're just you know explaining. So that's really cool, Chaz. I'm really glad to hear that. That makes me really happy. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because I like that's it's all about like infusing that sense of divine feminine energy and goddess energy into people, and like inspiring that in people is the, is important to me. You know, and it's all, I have to credit my teacher. Um, mm-hmm. Her name was, her name is uh, Kelly. She like, she was my teacher at PCC um, over at Portland Community College when I took this class and like, and I bring these photo shoots back to, to the class to edit a class and like, you know, and show her what I was doing with it and stuff. And she told me, she was like, she's like, so you're telling me that like, you're like, you're the, here the year you are this like kind of, big dude this cis male that's like creating this like comfortable space for women to come and like be nude in front of you and throw art on top of them and like and, and take photos and like and, and they're telling your friends about it and their friends are coming to you and like and then the words getting around it's like you better never let go of that yeah that's pretty you know, amazing like, be really yeah. proud of that and don't ever let go of that always make that your focus don't ever lose don't don't ever lose track of that don't yeah don't get your wires crossed with anybody, please. Because what you're right. doing is so important. And yeah. she told me that at the beginning, and I was like, all right, I'm going to hold on to that. Because I really liked her a lot. She was cool. You know, I became like her unofficial TA. Because I took that class, she was like, dude, you can teach this class. What are you doing? And I was like, because I'm like, <laughs> I, was, I was taking, I was I'm taking, I took a, uh, I got my, my associate's degree and my certifications to be addiction counselor. Okay. And I needed something creative to balance out all that heavy emotional book work yeah you know, all, that, all that shadow work that i was doing you know on myself through mm-hmm. having to like learn about other people yeah so 
and so I took that class and I ended up taking like four, four, like four classes with her in a row, like for a whole year. <laughs> so that was pretty cool, you know. So, so was that, can I just ask from a chronological point of view, Chaz, was that after you were a practicing photographer and then you decided to go into um, addiction counseling or kind of what's yeah, the... Well, so I have, I have, a, I have a, a, a goal, like a big, big, like my five-year goal that I used to, but I usually call it, is to create a nonprofit for at-risk kids to teach them how to do photography, videography, digital art, music production, Amazing. you know coding things like that i want to do like a drop-in center here in portland or wherever i'm at at the time that i start to do it and show the, the whole thing with, with making the shapes of divine project the book and the showing that it's going to be successful is is, is proof of work proof of concept that like the blockchain works making coffee table work book works doing art as a photography as a medium works and then mm -hmm. teaching that to at-risk kids by showing them that I've already done this and I continue to do this. So there's no reason you can't do your own version of it. And let me teach you how to do this. And then once I can show that that works here in my, in my town for a year or two and get the stats up and get all things up and running and smooth the way they should be, mm -hmm. then I can take that and I can go to different communities around the world and I can drop that. I can do like little mini TED Talks and, and yeah. show people to open these kind of like com these community centers for these at-risk kids because I feel like if we get enough kids together before they before the addictive thing or or before they get themselves into trouble kicks in when they're when they you know if they come from that 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 background that they're prone yeah. to that at risk, then yeah. you know, two hundred years when I'm gone and dead and gone and dust in the wind, then somewhere along the line that those genetic traits start to get healed. And they start mm. to get broken. And like yeah. then they then then become with the world becomes better because it's just like there's less addicts and there's less trouble and like you know those kids have kids and those kids have kids and they never get into trouble and like yeah yeah so yeah. that's that's the whole that that's why i became a counselor so i could learn how to like, teach myself how to like and figure out a way that i can that i can do that for the youth you know what i mean yeah so, that's really that's really powerful yeah. i've got six right. and a half years like six and a half years playing sober myself so okay. Put up in seventy in May. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. That's a, an incredible feat. And your your work can, your work conveys psychedelia from a surface standpoint, but obviously it's coming from within you and and the it's energy. It's not necessarily just the aesthetics of psychedelics, but but right. there is well, that. Also, also, yeah, I'm one of those counselors that that actually believes in the use of psychedelics and and in in moderation of like of okay. people for rehabilitation and yeah. for personal personal services and uh, personal usage for like mm -hmm. like they, I believe in I don't do it anymore but I I highly believe in high microdosing yeah this so yeah. like greatest things we could ever do it's mm -hmm. when I sit down and I, and I work on these pieces I actually trip yeah. my brain my I'll come away from the computer and be like oh, I'm kind of high, you know, yeah. and I'm sober. So we're saying, but yeah. I, I come away from working with the art that is based in psychedelia. Mm -hmm. I will, I kind of get, I trip those, those, those chemicals in my brain. Yeah. And it, and it opens my mind back up again the way I, yeah. like, like I would as, as if I was like on a small dose of, of, of something. Yeah. Which is cool. You know what I mean? That but I also really believe cool. in like, I believe in plant, plant medicine and stuff to, should be part of rehabilitation. I believe the mushrooms, that the ayahuasca, I, yeah. I bang that all those things should be incorporated into rehabilitation at some point and i i do i do a, a little bit of like footwork for that here in my local area it's a big psychedelic society here in portland that um we're trying to get we're trying to bring that like that component into rehabilitation more yeah because it would really help well it, I mean? is, I, it is it is in yeah i mean it is the next it's going back to, but it's actually becoming the future of psychotherapy, even though even though it's already been, you know, the benefits have been discovered. But I mean, it it is the future, um, destigmatized, you know. And that's that's what I'm working on. That's one of my other little mini projects off the side. Like, if there's ever meetings or like or like conversations with that on in person mm -hmm. or online, you know, my local area, like I'm jumping all over that. I'm like, hey, that's great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah 
Fantastic. I mean, I, 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 in your work, I just see this limitless potential of, it just feels like, you know, you just look at your, your pieces and it just feels like anything's possible in this universe, in this life, in other lives. You know, there is there is that feeling of infinite possibility. So I, I, I'm sure that, you know, as you've just outlined so articulately, Chaz, you know, the hallucinogenic side it has informed that in your practice in a way that's really, really interesting. Yeah, I, so I'm, I'm, you know, I have a lot of, I keep my, my fingers and toes in a lot of different, different fires and different pans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I try to keep myself busy, you know, so. Brilliant. And, and can I ask you, you know, um, your, you know, your, your journey as a street photographer in San Francisco, which is obviously a, a really eclectic city. Um, and, and now you're, you know, you're moving into this really cool NFT art space that seems to me to suit you down to the ground because you are so multi-talented with your photography, um, as an artist and also with your music. So can, can you can you talk a bit about the fusion of those elements and how NFTs um, has enabled this um, this for you? Um, the music's always been a part of like music's always been. I've been in the rave scene since I was like twenty two. Before that, I was a goth kid and then like total industrial electronic music. Ever since I was a kid, you know, it's always yeah. something's always spoken to me. So NFT, NFT, every NFT that I create is one minute, 11 seconds long. But then in my unlockable content, there's a wave file that's five minutes, 55 seconds long and a video that's like a high res video of that, of the NFT on kind of a loop or a dragged version that's five minutes, 55 seconds long. There's actually also a YouTube station uh, channel uh, on for Shapes the Divine. Um, you can see all the five minute, 55 second tracks with the full length music on each video, like on, there's like, I think there's 40, 40 of them. Chaz, what's the, what was the name of your YouTube channel? Shapes of the Divine. Shapes of the Divine. Yeah, Shapes of the Divine. Mm -hmm. um, so so everybody, anybody can see like, I just haven't promoted it yet, yet that much yet yeah. because I've been kind of building it up and like uploading photos or uh, images and like doing like little shorts and stuff and tagging it right and trying to get like some organic growth before I like mm -hmm. actually do a big launch party, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I took all the five minute, 55 second track videos with the five minute, 55 second tracks that I made, made videos out of all of them. And then they're all the unlockable content for every, every one that's in every NFT that I have is mm -hmm. in the lockables. And then also like uploaded every single one of them in order <laughs> onto YouTube. <laughs> so really quietly, I was like, let me do this really quietly. And you know what I mean, <laughs> don't tell anybody yet. I want to like have it completely done before I like actually like, like I want to have at least 50 up there before I could like actually announce it like officially it. and do a drop in like, you know what I mean? And I just think it's a really cool way of like, of like, of presenting like, this is what you get in the unlockable content. I mean, yeah, you can download it, rip it off, whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? Like, but if you really want to own it, then you want to buy the piece. And each right. one has like the link back to the collection in each piece, like with a description of what that piece is and what it means and like that kind of stuff. So. And I took the same descriptions from each piece and put it into each each video. So each one has its own backstory, its own. And I also write all the backstories too. It just little. I usually I usually use quotes from psychedelic artists or 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 people like that are in that field of like of like counseling or like knowledge. Or but ninety nine percent of the time, I usually write my own little backstories that have like little snippets of things about blockchain and code and like i do like funky little like like fictional stories for like to go along with the whole piece which is that's really great. fun that's really you know? cool yeah it's fun yeah <laughs> it adds yeah. more of an element i feel like it makes it more like makes it more valuable in the long run monetarily mm. wise too, you know? yeah 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 but it's also so uh it's so interesting to hear you elaborate on your creative process in that way that it's not just about the visual work or the, you know, the video it, it, there's so many layers to it and and on that note Chaz I, I wanted to ask you I know that you have this international audience and and your work is um you know you you sell internationally so can you can you tell us a bit about how you've cultivated that mainly clubhouse and twitter honestly okay 
you know, I started off doing this journey back in March of this last year, I think it was, mm -hmm. on Clubhouse. Somebody gave me a, a invite on, on back in February, and I kind of put it off and put it off, put it off on getting on there. Like, I jumped on there and like, I was like, this is weird. It's like being a podcast. I don't know if I like this or not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, yeah, I, I think everyone felt that way. Everyone felt that way for a while. Yeah. Well, it was right before the, the, the Saturday Night Live version, uh, their, their, their little skit came out where I just got on on the clubhouse and I got into my first NFT room. And it was like the, the, the first room that I was on was the auction room for, I think it was David Guetta's piece and like Farouk and those guys were running it. There was like 600, 800 people in this room and like, and this piece sold to like 888, 98 or 88.8 .8 ETH. And I was just like, what is this? I was like, you're telling me you were making like little 3D cube stuff you can get for free on that online and like slapping some like JPEGs inside of it and like throwing a little bit of music to it that they talked about. It took them like three years to write or some shit and they're selling it for like 8.9. What, what, what's going on right now? I was like, that was my first experience with Clubhouse and like any the whole NFT thing. Literally, like that was my first one. I was like, I was like, what is happening right now? I was like, <laughs> Thing. And then I got into the smaller rooms and I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. That was a whale room. That was like one big name DJ, you know, that like had somebody do a bunch of art for him. And he wrote like a little three minute pit flip for, her, and they did it on like Nifty Gateway, you know? And I was just like, and that was my first experience. And then I discovered, then I discovered about like OpenSea and then I discovered Rarible and then I discovered, you know what I mean? Like, and I was like, oh, let me try this. So I made it, I made a piece on my phone and then <laughs> I put that up, and that was the first one that I actually um uh the other Frank 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 Uncle Frank from the crypto pill community bought that piece. He just got my Genesis piece. He was like, "I'm buying the Genesis piece because like I know it's gonna be worth something someday." <laughs> I was like, "I love That's you so much." Thing. Yeah, he's from he's from Australia actually. That's where he's from. But just, so mainly it's just been like it's mainly been Clubhouse that but like just people okay. from all over the world that I meet, and they just like I'm real about like I talk I talk about my art like. And about my life, basically, in the, in the rooms. And I don't always talk about my art. Sometimes I just talk about my life, and somehow it gets tied into the art. And I just mm -hmm. keep it real. And people seem to have been attracted to that. And, like, I'm really humbled by the whole thing. And I was talking to one of my one of, the, one of my friends. who's a really good friend of mine and, and a model of mine who's coming over on the 17th to do a photo shoot with me. And she's one of my favorite people to shoot with. And I'm telling her about all this stuff that's going on today. And she was like, you worked so hard for this, dude. You've been working for something like this since I've known you for the last like six years since you've been in Portland. And I know you were doing this shit before in, in San Francisco and LA. So like, don't, she's like, don't, she's like, don't look at gift horse in the mouth, bro. Like, yeah. you deserve this. You worked 30 years for this, dude. Like, you, yeah, yeah. just getting the recognition that you, that you deserve what you would, what, what you have coming to you now. That's all. Yeah. Because you kept it real and you kept it humble people listen and they actually are attracted to your story so you know you know what you're doing just like don't, but, don't change anything you're yeah on, you're allow great. allow yourself to enjoy that that's yeah that, yeah that's hard to do sometimes though you know as an artist and it's like as a person mm. like, as someone that like who's in like recovery and like you know like you know, part of my story that i get to tell yet um actually so 12 years ago um I got hurt in a home invasion in San Francisco in my addiction. And I got struck in the head with a hammer and was in a coma for 12 days and couldn't walk, talk, speak, any of that stuff. So four months in a, in a rehab hospital, and I finally got out. And, like, I had to relearn how to do everything, it's like read, write, spell, speak, wow. all that shit. You okay. know, and, like, my right hand still doesn't work that well if I do everything left-handed, you know? Are you, are you left-handed or? No. No. Not at all. I, wow. actually, I had to learn how to do everything left-handed. So I do everything. The Apple Pencil with the iPad, iPad lately has been helping me get more de dexterity in my in my left hand mm -hmm. than I had before. My writing has improved. Like I've gotten really good at masking and like and and drawing with the pencil, like to, to do the animation stuff that I do on the iPad. So mm -hmm. yeah, so like that's that's a whole part of the whole. I always people we I forget to always talk about that part of the journey, like because it's just like it's it is what it is you know what i mean it's like but at the same time it's like i have to remind myself that like this is part of my journey this is part of my yeah. story yeah you know and like 
I try not to dwell on it because I'd rather be an inspiration to people than sit sit around and feel sorry for myself. Mm. You know what I mean? So for sure. But that yes. that you know those those huge obstacles that you've faced, um, and thank you for sharing, um, Chaz. You know around addiction and and also you know this um, extreme um, accident that happened to you um, physically. You know um, how do you feel that that's that's shaped your work? Um, because yeah, it does seem like your work conveys that anything is possible. So in, in a way, you're kind of the living embodiment of that, aren't you? Um, I think that's actually shaped a huge part of it. I think that mm -hmm. I think that that like I was already really creative. You know, I did. I've been doing photography since I was like since I was 14, 15 years old. Really seriously, since I was like 21, when I picked up my first camera, it was like an old Pentax K1000 film camera. At yeah. the time, like, I was such a snob. I wouldn't shoot anything black and white, anything about black and white until like 2000. And then it wasn't, then it was until like 2002 or three that I actually finally like broke down and got a digital camera. Got it. And like, so I wouldn't even, like, I was such a, I was such a purist. Like, yeah. I used to, know, I used to say, that, like, I never learned, I actually never learned Photoshop. Like, everything I do is like, I do everything in this one software called On One Software. And to use their their AI masking tool to like do all the all the removing all the backgrounds and stuff, I like do it all by hand. Like I just never really learned. I know rudimentary things about Photoshop, mm -hmm. but like I was one of those photographers who's like, if I can't get a photo out of out of the camera that's good enough to publish, show the camera. There's no reason I should be publishing it. Which yeah. is funny how the art the form that I yeah. do now is like completely <laughs> Photoshop. You know, it's like, complete, like it's complete com like composition now, which is right. funny. To me, like it's like that. I went from like one extreme to the other, but like having to relearn everything left-handed, and like I think that what happened was is because the the com the chemicals that are on the left-hand side of the brain are the ones of logic, numbers. It's all like the comp comp like computable stuff. You know what I mean? Like all this right. stuff. It's like the logical shit. Shit, and like mm -hmm. I think what happened in my theory is like I think that my all those chemicals had nowhere to go. The synapses weren't picking them; they're just kind of falling short. I think they mm -hmm. all kind of got flooded to the right hand side of the brain, and right. like just took my creativity and like boosted it, like gave it a rocket boost to the moon. I said, "Here you go." Since you can't Love like that. be logical and like going to be really bad with math and numbers now, and like you know, and, and <laughs> money and shit like that, so it's really they you just be really creative. Have fun with that. And the universe gave me this kick in the in the pants. So like, here, here's a little boost for you to be like even more an artist than you already were that's incredible you know I mean? yeah so that's that's the way i look at it it's like it's like a, yeah. it's like a silver lining you know what i mean definitely you know, honestly like mm. so no, that's I, mean, a... I, I feel like it, it was my karmic slate got cleaned in in my opinion right back then you know what i mean yeah because i was in the middle of my addiction and whatnot you know what i mean like i was just i was doing stupid stuff that got me in that situation and i survived for some reason so you know i think the reason is to help other people you know, yeah. to, to empower other people even more than myself, you know? Yeah. So and that's, that's what this whole project, all my art is all about, you know? So that, that's really powerful. I should, minting, I should be minting some of my old photography that's not this project also. Yeah. You know, some of my projects, some of my projects and like portrait work and things like that. So um, that's coming. I'm just, <laughs> I just need to, I, take, to take the time to sit down and make that collection. Right. I mean, I guess, I guess, as a as a solo operator, if you will, there is only so much you can do in every twenty four hour day. <laughs> yeah, only sleep and shift. I was shifts of three to four hours as, as it is. You know, so, except for the last last weekend was nice. Actually, lay in bed and sleep for like three days. You know, get caught so up was, on that. For a I was going to ask you about about that, like how long you know, because your work is so layered um, and has so many different components to it. Um, how long does it take you to make a work on average? I mean, it used I'm, to take I'm sure it's different days. every time, but. Mm. It, it, used to make me, it used to take me a few days. Now it okay. takes me, I can, I did two today, but I mean, I started at 6 a.m. and I didn't stop doing that until like 12 hours later. You know, it was like 12 hours of work. Right. So if I, if I put my head down, it takes me about six hours. If I if I take my time, and like 
because I'll go like I'll I'll make a version of it and then I'll go and I'll see like little flaws and like little things that I don't like and I'll go back and start over from scratch. Right. All the way back masking it again. You know what I mean? Just to make sure that everything's like just perfect in its right place. You know? And the way I do it is like so I, I start off doing it on the computer and then I airdrop it over to the iPad and then I animate it over there. And then once I get the animation done in perfect the way I like it. Then I throw it back on the computer again and make like the make like a five minute loop video of mm -hmm. the entire thing like in in like Final Cut, um, and then go like process all between all the all the frames to make sure they they blend well together. Figure out what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna animate it. Sometimes I like doing like this kind of this cool kind of effects between like in between frames, like where like it'll flip them and like do like weird animation stuff, different tones and colors, and like do different filters, just, like just to make it different you know what i mean and yeah. then once i have the animation completely done that five minute 55 second video then i sit down with the ipad in front of it and i put that that video on full screen on on, on a loop in front of me and I'll, I'll open up the ipad and i use launchpad's novation mm -hmm. um or, yeah launchpad by novation and I'll, I'll sit down and i'll figure out what music goes best with the music or the mm -hmm. best the music. and then i'll then i'll like Starting, starting, starting from the beginning, I'll watch the actual video and animation and create the music to go along with the video and the, the NFT. So, so, so you're incredibly rigorous in your practice. And I, I think it's really fascinating the way you're talking about it, Jazz, and the way you know, you've gone from obviously being this analog purist for the right reasons, actually, because photography is uh, was sorry, you know this this kind of hallowed profession, um, and I and I can understand that that friction between film versus going digital. But now you've kind of embraced all these different technologies, and and they're part of your working process in a really fascinating way. It's you, it, it, it's interesting. Yeah, it's really it's interesting. Like how I like I merged them all together. I don't know right. how that happened, honestly. Like I just I looked at I looked at the NFT community and I was like, what can I do that's gonna stand out? Okay. You know, what what can I do to make it different? Like like how do mm -hmm. I how do I stand out from the rest of the crowd that it's not just like sunset photos of the really cool landscape or like astro photos or or even like you know, I have a ton of like portrait photography that like that I've done with as themed like theme photography over the years. Like I, I like I just did a show back like three years ago right before the pandemic hit or two years ago um where i did this thing called that was a dark circus and i did at the studio back then i had a bunch of people come in and like then did like the, all these crazy like which one of those one of those school projects also like the tornado gallery show and right. um, it was like a bunch of, we did like the dark the dark circus team kind of like goth goth the gothic like kind of dark circus type thing you know what i mean yeah yeah and yeah. I had people come in and I did a bunch of photos on like like against a white wall, like a big curb, 40 foot by 24 foot wall. We had all this really nice lighting with like pro photo lighting and like all these like, like the big like huge parabolic like 57 inch like Westcott the the Zeppelin box with like yeah. the pro pro like pro 10 or the mm -hmm. the pro BX ones in it. You know what I mean? Like the pro photo stuff, like beautiful lighting, awesome, amazing setup. Like, it was so much fun. And I, so we took that and, and we, and I created a bunch of like really amazing photos. And I was like, but these, this, this, like against the white wall. I'm like, these are cool, but like, it'd be a lot more fun if I just took like circus themed like art and like compose these people out and drop it in the background. Right. I see what you mean. Just, so, I, so that's what I did. I created a yeah. bunch of like photography with like circus themed backgrounds of people that were dressed up as circus actors how cool how cool it was like kind of a dark circus thing and then yeah i also um during the during the gallery show we had um uh fire spinners out on the street we had um uh aerial artists on 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 silks in this in the space in the middle of the space as performing wow. as people were walking around and like we did on a first thursday art walk in portland which is like the big art walk every every first Thursday of the month. Every they open up all the galleries. And like there's like one section in downtown called Everest Street Lofts. It's like all these all the the bottom floor entire like this entire two block area are all galleries, and every changes their galleries every month to do the art walk during the summer. 
So, wow, monthly. That's yeah. that's that's really something. Yeah. So like I have a bunch of those photos and I'm like, I keep like telling myself, like, you should really make a collection on open sea of like of that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like mm -hmm. recently on Calumet, I drew up a bunch, I had a bunch of photos from like the wasteland weekend people that are like the Mad Max desert re desert festival people. Yeah. I took a bunch of their stuff and I actually composed a bunch of them out and like drop post-apocalyptic uh scenes behind them. And then threw that up on threw those up on Calumet, like threw up like I think it was like 15, 16 of them, you know, just to see what just to see what what Cal how Calumet works. I was like, I wonder if I throw this stuff up there, they're gonna sell, you know. And what what was the response like? Uh Calumet's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's it's Calum, it's, it's tricky. You got to be it's just like any other platform. You got to be out there like pushing it, promoting it, talking about it. You got to be in the rooms for it. You got to okay. get really get, get the get the work in people's in front of people's eyes. You know, mm. and like, I'm so concentrated on on the shapes of the divine thing right now that like I just need to concentrate. on when it comes to like marketing one thing, I don't want people to get confused that I'm trying to do something else and get right. crossed over that one or like or take the tension off this one so like put tension on this one. And it's just like, that's why I haven't really, besides my Gan art stuff, that mm -hmm. I just kind of throw a few pieces up in there. Like once a week, I'll do a little run and like throw up like five or 10 pieces in like in my Gan art collection over on OpenSea. And that's actually doing well. I've sold like six pieces out of it. You know? It's brilliant. And, you know, well, and I'm actually, the next project is actually a new called Shapes of the Gan. So okay. yeah, after, after Shapes of the Divine, Shapes of the Divine wraps up in February of this next year, Mm -hmm. when the book comes out, then my next project is going to be a whole collection called Shapes of the Gan, where it's Gan art, this AI generated art that I create with the models that I shoot with. We actually create the Gan together in mm -hmm. that sitting and then pick out the ones that out, of those, out of that to use as projections to put on people. Right. Wow. So That's... it's art. It's actually art that we create, the three of us, the two of us create together with an AI to use as projections instead of the visionary art that I've been using for the I'm shapes sure. of the mind. I mean, which is at the end of be a really good, I've done a couple of them, so I know it's good. To, it's a good twist. So it's kind of experimental. And, and, and with that, I just, you know, we're really excited that as part of the Meta Art Club, we'll have a Metaverse Museum where, um, you know, collectors can actually go in and view the work and then they can go into their own rooms as well and, and view their pieces displayed. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, it seems like the technology is now enabling, as you've just outlined, Chaz, these new ways of interacting with the work that, that were never possible before. So do you, do you see that as the technology is pushing you to do new things or do you, is this coming from you? And then you're like, OK, what technology is that is, is going to facilitate my imagination? Maybe the tech's not there yet. I mean, maybe you're ahead of the tech. <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah. um, I, I i mean like i've seen i've seen a lot of gan art it's very popular right now for to right. do generated ai generated art um mm -hmm. i've seen the whole 10k collection thing and the whole generated thing behind that and they're writing the script behind that and doing like the coding but for just for like the simple stuff that i've been doing the stuff like where you're just taking words and putting it into a generator but basing on your based on your words I've seen a lot of really good Gan art based on people's words. Okay. I've seen a lot of really crappy art Gan art based on people's words. Mm -hmm. I've created a bunch of crappy art based on my words. Right. I've learned how to be how to be very careful with it and like learn mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't work. Okay. You know I mean, how like down to like print, print, like different how different words like in what order you put it in or like you know what I mean like there's little I think there's like there's little unspoken tricks that you just don't that we're all just trying to figure out and do and do on like learn on our own. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it, at the end of the day, it's 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 a computer brain sitting in a basement somewhere at Google or MIT, and it's spitting out art based on the words that we're giving it, and it's machine learning. It's teaching itself how to create yeah. art based mm -hmm. on things like instant information that we're like feeding this this. So it's 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 a very strange collaboration. Sometimes I'm like. I feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, who am I to put art up online to sell for this, <laughs> this amount of ETH and get away with it? You know what I mean? 
but then I look at other people and I see like, you no, know, the thing about my art, my, my can art is like, I won't use it in any way, shape or form either for sale, for a projection, anything. I'm like, mm-hmm. whatever, I'm being a purist about it here. You know, I'm doing the same thing I did with my photography in the beginning. Right. I'm like, I won't use it if it doesn't come straight out of the computer the way that it looks and it's usable there. I don't want to have to go Photoshop it. I don't want to change anything about it. Because like, let me tell you, when you like, Use, using the word goddess or divine feminine, for example, in Gan art, will spit out some very strange faces. It does okay. weird things with faces. It's kind of disturbing. And I've okay. seen a lot of people go back in and Photoshop it where they, they Photoshopped it where it looked better. And I'm like, mm, I'm not going to do that because if I'm going to use something, I want to use it straight out as, as, yeah. it, as it came out. I don't want to do... It's not that I want to put the work in. Mm-hmm. I just, no, I, no, I, no. I understand. If you're going to do yeah. that kind of art, you should figure out a way to do it where it's where the purity of it sticks with it. Yeah. That makes and you, sense. You, you honor the process, which is that it's AI generated. I mean, that's, right. that's yeah, that's why it's interesting. Yeah. 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 So like all any of the stuff you see, like I have a whole collection on, on open sea that's Gan Art by Chaz. And there's constantly every week I'm adding new stuff to that. You know what I mean? They're like, and it, like a lot of it, what I do is I, I'll go to write the stories and the backstories for my for my for my shapes and divine stuff, mm-hmm. and then I'll take words from and phrases and words from my backstories that I wrote for those and right. create games out of those. That's amazing. So it's like I'm taking That's like the right. words that I wrote myself and yeah. then turning out to more art out of it. Right. So it's like it's like a self perpetuating art loop. I call in it the endless, fractal, in the endless fractal loop of, of art. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to borrow, like, I might that's borrow what it that. Is. <laughs> there's Because there's a way in, in BQ Gan with clip, mm-hmm. with a clip, clip additive thing to it, apparently. I haven't figured it out yet. There's a way to do like endless fractal loops on there that will like, you can program it where it will like, where it will like go into the art and keep going in and like, and then zooming in and zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. And like keep like like switching back for like Got endless it. endless practical. There's a guy named uh mm-hmm. broken mindset on 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 open sea and Hickenock that is just like I look at his stuff and I'm just like, dude, bro, <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> and it's just like, like, my brain <laughs> won't wrap around the whole coding thing. Cause yeah. I lost all my languages in my brain surgery. So every time I, I look at code now, I'm like, uh and I can't seem to like relearn it. Like my brain doesn't want to do it yet. I'm waiting for the day where like my brain kicks in and goes, okay, I'm ready to learn code again. Chaz, in, in, you know, as in parallel with that, can I just ask you, you know, you have, you're so prolific and so creative um, on so many different levels. And you obviously refuse to be defined by any one, um, one medium, even in the digital space. But you know, how, how, uh how do you think it you're going to be sorry i'll rephrase that um you know when do you think you're going to go okay i've made it now i'm 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 good with this i'm happy with this i like this channel for my work or, or do you do you think it's just yeah Never. okay no i don't know how to like settle down like that mm-hmm. this is not in me i'm way too i'm way too adhd for that shit i'm like <laughs> <laughs> as, soon as, I, as soon as I finish one yeah. thing, I'm going to just want to. I just want to start another one. Yeah, I like constantly learn. Like that's a weird thing. It's like I never thought at 51 years old, 12 years after brain surgery, like that I would enjoy school or learning or or education in mm-hmm. any state. I was a TD dropout when I was 16. Right. Now I got. I just graduated with a 3.87 GPA. And the, on the president's list, and the honor roll. I'm like, what is the fuck? And I'm like, really? I'm like, who knew at this age that I was going to enjoy going to school and like learning mm-hmm. so much? And that same thing applies. Like, there's not a day that I don't pick up my camera that I don't learn something from it. Right. So, like, there's always, I'm constantly like on YouTube and like, and online and different tutorials. Mm-hmm. And, like, I have like a whole folder of like nothing but tutorial videos of like different programs and different software and different photography programs and like the different photographers like even though like how i know half the things that they have in there but like like i've got the whole this whole collection of like of a uh oh god i can't remember his name off the top of my head it's a really famous 
compositional photographer. But like, mm-hmm. I go back and I watch his tutorials all the time, and like, and I, and I like know it, know it, know it, and I'll skip through, skip through, skip through, skip through, and then I'm like, oh, there's one that I didn't pick up on yet, and I'll watch that 45 minute video, that hour long video. I'm like, oh, that's how you do that. That's cool. And then I'll go back and I'll, and I'll use that in my own photography, my own art. And like, yeah. you know, I'm constantly like, it's photography and art is a constant shifting shit. It's like, it's like this we world. It's this constant shifting landscape of, of knowledge of like, yeah, you know, like there's always upgrades and different, like, especially with digital art, you know? Yeah. I, it seems, it seems, Chaz, like the artists that we have um, in this collection and that I've been speaking to, I think you're my 12th artist now that I've um, had the pleasure of interviewing for the Meta Art Club. And it seems like you have this common thread um, that unites you of, of that, of, of not just kind of um, taking anything for granted with your practice and just being hungry to learn all about the different facets of the nft space so that you can apply it to your work and and that that process is in itself constantly changing updating shifting so you have to be um keeping up or or even two steps ahead which is extremely challenging given the fact that you've got so many things going on <laughs> as an artist so it, it's it's really incredible to hear about you know your your productivity and your process challenging sometimes you constantly, you constantly have this feeling of FOMO. Right. You know, you're missing out. And it's like, you're like, what am I missing now? Like every time I'm not on Clubhouse for the night, I'm like, something else drops or like something else happens and I missed out on. I'm like, but, 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 but wait. And I'm like, I feel like I'm constantly playing catch up with somebody or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, what, so would you say that, would you say that this is a digital revolution or would you characterize it as a digital evolution? I think it's a renaissance. Yeah. I think it's the new renaissance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's funny because like in every other renaissance around the in, in the history of, of man, there was always a plague before it. That's interesting. Think about it. Like there's yeah. always been a plague before the, the renaissance has happened. Every right. renaissance has ever happened in this world, around the world. You know what I mean? There's always been some sort of bout of sickness or like some like period of darkness. Mm-hmm. Or some, like you know something that happened, like some change in evolution that that like that that, that that's that it started that, that happened right before that Renaissance starts to happen. Especially I have goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean I, those aren't my words. Those, right. those, I think those were that somebody else put pointed that out the other day on mm. Clubhouse, and I was like, I don't remember who it was, so I can't mm. take credit for it. But I'm like, I'm gonna quote that though, and I told him that yeah. I was like, I'm, I remember you said this. But I'm going to quote this out of this because it's it's true, you know what I mean? So, and I went and did a bunch of Google research. I was like, let me see if it's actually true or not. And I was like, shit, damn, it is. You know what I mean? It so is, we're, yeah. we're we're in a monumental phase of like of of the world changing and like how even how art is being presented to the world. I mean, this technology is like we're on the forefront of some stuff that's like like I saw this thing at uh, NYC. Um, the first night that I was there, the second night I was there, I was doing photos for the first light dot, dot art people. There's this dude there with this this thing called Portal, it's P-O-R-T-L. And it's literally like this box with these amazing speakers in it. And it's a 3D and immersed environment box. So the NFT that you throw in the box becomes 3D and like you get you have a character, it'll spin around in circles like you see the whole whole view of it. They had the guys from a um the Huxley okay. uh, project there. And they had that in the box. And I was like, and like, of course I met the guy that who had the box at the very end of the night. He's like, dude, we need to give your art my box. I'm like, yeah, I do. And I'm, I'm like, what can we do? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> like, what did you say something earlier today? I was like. You know, well, well, that's something you can look forward to. <laughs> yeah. There's also another, there's, um, I know that um, it's not, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. Like, I just got a touch base there, but uh, Dinah, who, um, uh, who is Avalon Music, um, is going to be, who is part of the Searchlight.art team from Searchlight, uh, Searchlight Dinah NFTs from Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's creating an entire immersed environment, 3D walkthrough 
based on her music and other artists and NFTs and stuff for the whole two floors. That, that sounds, shapes that the sounds really really incredible. Yeah, the Shapes of the Divine is going to be a part of the project's going to be a part of. They might be flying you back out to New York in December for that. And oh, amazing. It. That's yeah, exciting. So, um, and we're thinking like we could project your images, your art on right. the mannequins. And I was like, well, we could put the mannequins in the same exact poses the models are in. Exactly. And then project and projection art that, like yeah. projection art that onto the, onto the mannequins around the space. She was like, dude, that's brilliant. I was like, she was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, on the note of Renaissance and, and this, this digital Renaissance, um, you know, during the Renaissance, typically, a, you know, a new kind of patronage, arts patronage has come about with arts patrons really kind of leading um, you know, just just leading the movement in the same way that the Medici did, and and you know, it's it's happened throughout history. So I just I just wanted to finish um, Chaz on a note of you know the collectors because the collectors are so important, and NFTs gives you as the artist so much agency to build these relationships with collectors like Frank Schmitz and you know with collectors who are going to be part of um, the Meta Art Club as well. We're really excited about that, to bring them to you and to have you engage with them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, how, how do you feel about that change in um, the relationship between artist and collector without, without necessarily all the middlemen? I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, I, think it's, I think it's one of the best things that, that the art world has been like, I think it's been it's it's needed this for a long time. I think that this and it, it, the whole NFT thing, and it's been been this has been not, once again not my words, but like kind of my words. Like this was kind of the wild wild west, the art scene. You know, it's 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 become like this thing where like we don't need galleries or middlemen or bro brokers or anything like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like the, that's apparently the only thing we're going to need is is a CPA that's good in crypto. You know, but. <laughs> You know, in, in, <laughs> yeah no 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 I, I i see that in a way though there is there is almost a need that does exist for people who are not crypto natives to feel comfortable to get into the space on the collector side so there is that curatorial need you know to, to help people oh, understand like which artists which way to direct my collecting efforts? I mean, I mean, the sky's the limit. Otherwise, I mean, what, you know, I what's mean, your view on that? One of the things that I do worry about, and this is this is comes from like alone comes from like being at being at the conference and like being at one of the club, uh, one of the talks that Eric um, motivate Eric was doing, and he was actually interviewing two of the people from Searchlight, um, and he said, hey. If you're an artist, I want you to stand up in the room right now, and I want everybody to give you a hand because, well, the artist we couldn't do, we wouldn't be here. And I stood up, maybe eight other people, the entire room of the of the, of the ballroom of the Edison Ballroom, then it was pretty much a full room. Maybe eight of us stood up, which made me just wonder, like, who the hell are all the rest of these people in this ballroom right now if they're not artists? Okay. You know, so I started asking questions. I started like walking around and talking to people after the talk was done between in between speakers and like mm -hmm. met a bunch of people, grabbed a bunch of business cards, talked to people. A lot of them are like hedge hunt, hedge, hedge, hedge hunt uh, fund and investors, 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 people that are like that are like scouts for like law firms, like investors, things like that. There's a lot of the people that were the NFT at the convention were like are people that are looking to get into NFTs as an investment thing. Mm -hmm. um, I worry about the whole 10K collection thing. I wonder when that, that's that, I, I personally think that's gonna be a bubble, it's gonna be a bubble that's gonna burst. I think okay. that very, very few NFT collections that are over 10,000 or 10,000 or like around that number are gonna be in there for the, for the longevity. You know what I mean? I think that, that it's gonna like, Back when I got here, back in March, April, you know what I mean? May, June, it was all about fine art. It was about photography and art. Yeah. The ones, 
maybe people, maybe some people that are doing like offering, like, you know, like battling to figure out how to like, how do we put up like, like 10 editions, the same, the same piece of art on OpenSea. Like, we got to change, we the like, need to change the URL to save this one certain thing. So you can be like, and then you have to like sit there and like edit each and every single one of them. You should make sure you didn't 10, then she didn't sell, send to, sell 10 to one person for the same price. <laughs> Right. Yeah, totally uh, chess. Totally oh. chess. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but you know what you mentioned now is absolutely, and that's you know that's why I didn't buy the board apes in beginning May that they came out, and and I totally wish you. And to be honest, that's one of the really reasons. That's one of the you know maybe one of the yeah one of the reasons why we are doing what we're doing now is to put back the artists and to put back the quality of art and, and straight away at the same time, not only you know work with artists and create great artists, but also at the same time, create correct collectors and get super serious collectors on, right. on board that love art. So what you mentioned now is what I, I have experienced myself and it's a big reason again, uh, that we do what we do. Yeah. And I, I, that's, I appreciate that. And I appreciate like what, what you guys are doing with this. And like, that's part of the reason why I'm so excited to be a part of this is because like, this is bringing it back to the real art. You know, like I thought this it was going to take like a lot longer for the, for the whole, for this to actually happen. But I'm glad to see this happening now in the community, bringing it back to the artists and the art and the real, the, the one of one art. Like not that, not that 10K collections, some of them are cool. You know, you get the crypto pills, whatnot. I mean, like board apes, I don't really understand. I don't get it. It's just me. I don't, it's, I'm like, it's an ape, dude. Big deal. They all look the same. You know what I mean? Like, I had no interest in the beginning. I could have got it in the beginning and I was like, no, I'm cool, dude. I'm good. You know what I mean? And like, do I regret getting in, not getting in? Well, I have a little bit of FOMO. But at the same time, like, how do I know that, like, if I got in and then. What if the what if the bubble burst and like and then I end up flat on my face and then you're like way in debt and not able you know what I mean like that's that's not okay I'd rather I would rather invest in into like in and I appreciate people that buy my art because they see my premise as an artist moving forward they see the evolution of like of of where I'm going with with the direction I'm going with my art and they see the you know that's why I number everything with my with my pieces everything has a number to it and you, you can see the evolution of like what I'm making now compared to what I did in the beginning, you know? So that's one of the things that I feel like it's really important. So I have like complete transparency with people. And I want people to see my evolution is, you know, it's easy to pull things down online, really easy. It's simple. And I don't do that. I, that's, you know, I leave all, all my old stuff up, even like way back when, like when I was still doing, like, if you look at my face, my Instagram, my Facebook pages, all my old stuff is still up there because I want people to see. Like, I'm proud. I'm, I like going back and looking at of them one, looking out of it on one place, and and being able to see myself, like seeing the evolution of myself and how how much I've evolved and how much I've like improved from the beginning. You know, from ten years, twelve years, fifteen years ago. You know, I've got stuff on 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 Facebook that like I started my Chaz Razi page, my my Seagull photo page on there eleven years ago. You know, there's a lot of old stuff on there that I'd like. Sometimes I go back and look at it. I'm like, I should probably pull that down. I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's... Like, I like watching the evolution of it. I like watching the change. Like, see how much I've improved as a photographer. It keeps me, it keeps myself in humble and keeps myself in check, too. You know? And like, that's one of the things that that's, that's why, like, I'm so on the fence, though, AI art thing. Like, the what stuff that I'm doing is like, that's why I'm trying to be a curious about it. Cause like, you know, it's real easy to write write a snippet of code and like and 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 have like you know, ten thousand board apes go out there that have like a bunch of different like traits. You know, it's just a piece piece of code to write, and it doesn't take that long. I used to do coding before brain surgery, so I know like the time limitations and stuff like that on the projects. So I'm like, mm. you know, I just worry about that. That's why I'm like, but you know, like I keep I I keep saying. That, I keep telling people like I want to make an NFT of myself where I'm standing at the bottom of a mountain and it's a bunch of like 3D characters or like the all most popular 10K character like projects 
and like I'm standing at the bottom of a mountain with my hand, with my like my camera in my hand, looking up at the mountain, and, and here comes this like avalanche of 10k characters like just <laughs> carrying me at the bottom and then mint that shit. You guys want a really quick screen uh, uh preview of like what I'm doing? Thank you. Always love okay, that. Okay, hold on. So this is the first one that I did so far. Wow. I love it. Incredible. And this one's called Shapes of How, which is means um uh it's kind of mean uh in in the different I forget what language it is, but it's um when uh it's basically means hallelujah hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love that. Yes, it's the tribe. I love that one. Yeah. So those are the um those are the two pieces that I've worked on so far. And I'm working on a third one tonight. So, so thanks, Jess. Yeah. Thank you, you for sharing. Them? What do you think of them? I think it's super cool. Cool. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, no, you know, you know, you know me, right? Uh, I love your originality, I love your story, I love your creativity, I love just the way everything you do. So, uh, well, thank beautiful. You. So, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. You guys have a great night. Chaz Gold on that <laughs> incredible on that note. note. <laughs> and with that image in, in our minds, thank you for painting that and for sharing. Thank you for sharing your artistic integrity with us. It's been thank really, you. really special talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chaz. Thank you, Frank. I'll talk to you soon.